There are so many great beef product options when you go to the grocery store. From the grades of select to prime, how do you know the difference? I spoke to a meat scientist to find out. Dr. Phil, it is always good to see you. You are a literal meat scientist, right? You're, you're actually a meat scientist. So help us understand the different grades of beef because they are certainly not equal. And especially when you're talking about steaks, it comes down to the marbling that's in there. And when I say good, that's going to be your, your select grade of beef. It's the leanest of the grades that are usually available at grocery stores. When you get to the better grade, it's gonna be the choice grade, most widely available. And then some of the best is gonna be in the prime grade. You're going to see a little bit more of those flecks of fat in the meat itself, but it really helps to bring out that overall eating experience. Okay, so the more marbling, the better that culinary flavor is gonna really be. And tell us, because it's grilling season, so how do we best prepare these different cuts of meat? So if you wanted to take something and, uh, and, and let it sit overnight in a marinade to allow for that additional flavor to bring in uh, to the steak, that's a good option. However, when you get up to the higher levels of quality, the higher levels of grades, really salt and pepper is all you need. Okay, so just salt and pepper when you have a good piece of meat. So I have to ask you, is it a faux pas then if you end up putting a marinade on a really good cut of steak? Let the beef do the talking, uh, just a little bit of salt and pepper to enhance. All right, but I do have to ask though about marinades and rubs. What, what's the difference between the two and at which point would you apply one or the other? Usually a marinade is going to have some type of moisture uh, component to it. Uh, maybe a little bit of red wine, some beer, uh, some citric acid in the form of lemon or lime juice, and then some of the additional spices that you would bring into the overall flavor. Uh, for the rubs, they could be complex or just as simple as that half and half salt and pepper mix. Salt, pepper, maybe a little butter and, and, and you're good. I like that. Um, also though, do tell us because cooking the steak is a huge part of making sure that you're getting it done just right. Food safety as well. So kind of walk us through that. So I always recommend using an instant read thermometer, something like this. If the steak is the equivalent of my hand here, insert the thermometer from the side, trying to get to the geometric center of that. And that's going to be your best indication of overall doneness. Now, if you're looking for a specific doneness, uh, most folks pr prefer their steak around the medium degree. Um, you're targeting about 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Dr. Phil, there's so much science behind getting the perfect steak. I'm really glad I'm talking to you, a meat scientist. But help our viewers understand where they can go for more tips, tricks, and some great recipes. Well, of course, you can always reach out to us here at the University of Idaho, but some of your best resources will be at the Idaho Beef Council at www.idbeef.org or beefitswhatsfordinner.com.